morning everyone welcome to the second session of the same chapter i hope you enjoyed the summary and understood too now we are going to start reading the chapter but before i would like you to have a notebook and a pen with you write down the difficult words and this is going to be your activity for today so let's get started a king has three questions and he is seeking answers to them what are the questions does the king get what he wants yesterday we have seen the summary and the questions and yes he has got his answers but how he got his answers that we will get to know by reading the chapter so let's start the the thought came to a certain king that he would never fail if he knew three things these three things were what is the right time to begin something which people should he listen to what is the most important thing for him to do what do you do when you have a question in your mind you go and ask someone yes everybody does this but the question here is why he wanted to have answers to these questions because he thinks if he knew those answers he would never fail very good i believe you all have given right answer let's see what the king did next the king therefore sent messengers throughout his kingdom promising a large sum of money to anyone who would answer these three questions many wise men came to the king but they all answered his questions differently okay so the king sent his messengers let's see what were the different answers in reply to the first question some said the king must prepare a timetable and then follow it strictly only in this way they said could he do everything at its proper time others said that it was impossible to decide in advance the right time for doing something the king should notice all that was going on avoid foolish pleasures and always do whatever seemed necessary at that time yet others said that the king needed a council of wise men who would help him act at the proper time this was because one man would find it impossible to decide correctly without help from others the right time for every action but then others said that there were some things which could be urgent these things could not wait for the decision of the council in order to decide the right time for doing something it is necessary to look into the future and only magicians could do that the king therefore would have to go to magicians as we have read these are the different answers he got but which were of no use as it was not possible for a king to follow a timetable he has a big kingdom to take in care of likewise all other answers were futile let's move further in the answers to the second question some said that the people most necessary to the king were his counselors others said the priest a few others chose the doctors and yet others said that his soldiers were the most necessary to the third question some said science others chose fighting and yet others religious worship as the answers to his questions were so different the king was not satisfied and gave no reward instead he decided to seek the advice of a certain hermit who was widely known for his wisdom oh the king was not satisfied and anxious to get answers come let's see what he did next the hermit lived in a wood which he never left he saw no one but simple people and so the king put on ordinary clothes before he reached the hermit's hut the king left his horse with his bodyguard and went on alone as the king came near the hermit's hut he saw the hermit digging the ground in front of his hut he greeted the king and continued digging the hermit was old and weak and as he worked he breathed heavily now tell me 
what would you do if you see an old and weak man working hard? I know you all will come forward and help that person. So the king did the same. The king went up to the hermit and said, I have come to you, wise hermit, to ask you to answer three questions. How can I learn to do the right thing at the right time? Who are the people I need most? And what affairs are the most important? The hermit listened to the king but did not speak. He went on digging. You are tired, said the king. Let me take the spade and work in your place. Thanks, said the hermit, giving the king his spade. Then he sat down on the ground. Hmm, a helpful person he is. When the king had dug two beds, he stopped and repeated his question. The hermit gave no answer but stood up, stretching out his hand for the spade, and said, Now you rest and let me work. But the king did not give him the spade and continued to dig. One hour passed, then another. The sun went down behind the trees, and at last the king stuck the spade into the ground and said, I came to you, wise man, for an answer to my questions. If you can give me no answer, tell me so and I will return home. Here comes someone running, said the hermit. Oh, the poor king. He had to struggle to get his answers. But who came running there? Let's read more. The king turned round and saw a bearded man running towards them. His hands were pressed against his stomach from which blood was flowing. When he reached the king, he fainted and fell to the ground. The king and the hermit removed the man's clothing and found a large wound in his stomach. The king washed and covered it with his handkerchief, but the blood would not stop flowing. The king redressed the wound until at last the bleeding stopped. Now tell me. What would you do if you see a person injured and bleeding? Hmm? You will do the same. Right? Very nice. The man felt better and asked for something to drink. The king brought fresh water and gave it to him. By this time, the sun had set and the air was cool. The king, with the hermit's help, carried the wounded man into the hut and laid him on the bed. The man closed his eyes and lay quiet. The king, tired by his walk and the work he had done, lay down on the floor and slept through the night. When he awoke, it was several minutes before he could remember where he was or who the strange bearded man lying on the bed was. Forgive me, said the bearded man in a weak voice when he saw that the king was awake. I don't know you and have nothing to forgive you for, said the king. You don't know me, but I know you. I am that enemy of yours who swore revenge on you because you put my brother to death and seized my property. I knew you had gone alone to see that hermit and I made up my mind to kill you on your way home. But... The day passed and you did not return, so I left my hiding place and I came upon your bodyguard, who recognized me and wounded me. I escaped from him, but I should have died if you had not dressed my wounds. I wished to, to kill you and you have saved my life. Now, if I live, I will serve you as your most faithful servant and will order my sons to do the same. Forgive me. The king was very happy to have made peace with his enemy so easily and to have won him over as a friend. He not only forgave him but said he would send his servants and his own doctor to look after him and he promised to give back the man his property. That's true. A helpful person has many friends. What goes around comes around. If you help someone, Someone will surely help you out in your problems. Thus, we should help one another. Leaving the wounded man, the king went out of the hut and looked around for the hermit. 
Before going away, he wished once more to get answers to his questions. The hermit was on his knees, sowing seeds in the beds that had been dug the day before. The king went up to the hermit and said, For the last time, I beg you to answer my questions, wise man. You have already been answered said the hermit, still bending down to the ground and looking up at the king as he stood before him. How have I been answered? What do you mean? Do you not see? replied the hermit. If you had not pitied my weakness yesterday and had not dug these beds for me, you would have gone away. Then that man would have attacked you and you would have wished you had stayed with me. So the most important time was when you were digging the bed. And I was the most important man and to do me good was your most important business. Here, Hermit made the king understand the answers to his questions. So what was the first question? What is the right time to do something? So the answer to this was when he was digging, as if he could have gone, he would have been killed. Who was the most important person at that time? So at that time it was Hermit and what was the important work? To do him good and help him. Afterwards when the man ran to us the most important time was when you were caring for him because if you had not dressed his wounds he would have died without having made peace with you. So he was the most important man and what you did for him was your most important business. In that bearded man's case the right time was when he was dressing his wounds and caring for him. Who was the important person? The man himself. And what was the important work? To serve him at that time. Remember then, there is only one time that is important and that time is now. It is the most important time because it is the only time we have any power to act. The most necessary person is the person you are with at a particular moment. For no one knows what will happen in the future and whether we will meet anyone else. The most important business is to do that person good because we were sent into this world for that purpose alone. So what do you understand? The right time to do something is now. Because you have the power to act. The important person is with whom you are at a particular time. Because you don't know whether you will meet him again or not. It can be any person. Your relative, your friend, your family or anyone. The important work is to serve everyone with your goodness. And that I know my dear students will always do. Hey, welcome back. So, enjoyed the reading? Okay. Now, in the next session, we are going to do the meanings of the words along with the exercises. Till then, bye-bye. See you soon.